Well, of course, it's always a lot of work. Even on the scales that we, you know, we race, it's hard. It is. And then, you know, you bring into it, you got a pretty big operation going this year. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a time consuming, stressful. It's going to be a lot of things. Well, and I've already felt that because when we did the schedule, I looked at it and I went, that's twice as many races I'm used to running. Yeah, it's a far cry from you wiring uh, wiring race cars and helping uh-huh. out. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, we can't forget, though, the big kickoff to race season is the Northwest Race Car Show presented by Jetstream Aqua Massage and Moxie and Promotions over at the, the Heritage Mall in Albany. March 9th, as we're rolling the cars in after 9 p.m., we'll start the roll-in at that point, and then cars will roll out on Sunday the 11th at 6 p.m. That's always a big show, always a big draw. Get the fans in there. Get them around the race cars. Show off your race cars. Show off your sponsors. Meet the fans. It, it's always a lot of fun. And if I remember right, we are doing the same raffle we are this year, or we did last year, um, to raise money for the Shriners Hospital. Right, right, the Shriners. And I guess the neat thing about that, too, is it you don't have to be a racer. You don't have to be a fan. You could just be a normal fella, the family, and go see what, what is this? You know, what are we talking about? There's so many different shapes and sizes. Look at it from a different perspective. And, uh, yeah, then you can get the your neighbor that's never been in a car's, go to the mall and check it out and see what it's like. Get some enthusiasm going and grow the sport again. Exactly. You've got, you're going to have race cars of all shapes and sizes, and that's the beauty of it. We still have spots available. We've got a lot of spots for late models. So late model drivers, if you're out there, March 9th through the 11th, we would love to have your cars in the car show at the Heritage Mall. Get a hold of us at Moxie Media Promotions, Facebook, get a hold of Corey, myself, or Dom. Personally, we'll get you signed up. We'll get you in there. You yeah, know. we've put a lot of feelers out there. we got quite a bit of cars coming, but we'd like to get a little uh, a little more diverse. Exactly. We've got, a, we've got a lot of classes filling up, but the one class we still need cars in is going to be the late model class. And we don't care if you have an engine, anything like that. As long as it looks like a car. Yeah. <laughs> we, and, heck, if you don't have an engine in it and transmission, we'll help push the car in. Absolutely. There will be know. tons of people there watching them go in and out as well. So Exactly. We're all family. We'll help you get the cars in and out of the mall. You know, a couple quick things like we always say, make sure there are absolutely no leaks with your car. We don't need anybody slipping and falling on an oil puddle. Yeah. I, I know last year we had a – Corey and I had to sit there with mops and buckets cleaning up after a couple cars. It happens, but we'd like to eliminate that again this year. Um, another thing, feel free to detail your cars, spray the shine on them outside the mall, but once the car is in the mall, we would ask that no sprays be applied inside the mall. Yeah, nothing like an armor all on the tile floor. Uh, it got slick, and I remember last year when I was walking around, I got close to one of the cars that had been armor all in, in place, and I'll tell you what, I almost broke my tailbone. <laughs> I was going to use the medical term, but I figured I'd use tailbone because everybody knows what that means. That's right. That's right. You know, one big thing we always do there, like we talked about, is the raffle for Shriners. We're still looking for door prizes, guys. We want to put it out there. We want to make make Buzz Mitchell proud and do as much as we can for those kids because they got a special place in our heart. And don't forget, we're going to have the victory visit, too, associated with that, where we're going to go present the money. That yeah. we raised. So. Yeah, that'll be really nice. Last year, I want to say we raised about $1,000 for the Shriners Hospital at the car show. This year, we will always like to do more. We want to go big or go home, folks. Well, we've got to be able to do that. That one night, Corey and I were able to do $5,000. We know it can be done. Yeah, it can be done. And the, the car show is a two-day show. Yeah, we should, do, again, people, we really need your help. Um, we really just want some enthusiasm going. Let's try to get this moving. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> Had a little you, microphone problem there. You're not used to that microphone yet, are you? No. It's okay. It comes with time, buddy. I know. It comes with time. Uh, so like we said, practice has been scheduled at Willamette Speedway for the 7th of April. Bring, it at, bring your cars out. Throw some laps on them. I know I'll be there because... I need practice in the fire truck. Let's just be honest. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing at me, Dom? Practice in the fire truck. Dude. Are we going to start lighting cars on fire? No, we are not doing that. I do not like that F word. <laughs> that F word scares me. Nothing scares me more than that F word. But I'll tell you what. 
driving on the track in a three quarter ton truck, mm -hmm. it's not as easy as it looks. You know, I seen that when we were at Bakersfield. Remember that? Uh huh. That was pretty neat. Well, which one were you talking when about? When they had the two three quarter ton trucks and it kept drifting around. Yeah. That was pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, doing mud pack with those. But I'll tell you what, they had tires under them. Yeah. That's the beauty is, you know, I'm the newbie, so I get stuck with the one that's basically got racing slicks underneath it. So Nice. Last thing I want to do is pile that thing into the wall because I'm pretty sure Doug would uh would do more than tan my hide. Yeah, I could imagine that. It'd have to get a little stressful for you, too. It can, but at the same time, you know, it's it's all about having fun. Yeah, well, that's what's really neat because you actually do a really good thing for the track and for the people, and you have fun doing it. So I'm, I'm happy for you in that sense. It It is fun. But we talk about practice being open. Cottage Grove has scheduled their practice. We talked about it on the last show. We'll talk about it again. The 17th of March is going to be their open play day down there for all the Cottage Grove guys. And Sunset, I believe, has scheduled practice at well. I want, I want to say it's the 7th. It is the 7th of March. Uh, April as well as the 31st of March. So we've got between the the three main tracks here in the Wyant Valley, we've got five different practice sessions set up. So you can go to the tracks, get a feel for your cars, shake them down. It's always a good idea to shake down your car. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, figured rather than take it around the backyard, I'm, that'd probably be a good thing. You live in the city. Can you get even get your car in the backyard? Didn't you see my backyard? It's not that big. Yeah, I've got a, a big lot behind it. That's true. It's a little mushy, though. The septic is over there. Oh, dude, that that could be a <laughs> crappy deal. you got to be careful with that. Wow. We need to work on your comedy. I've been told that before. <laughs> Normally it's Corey, and I just don't believe anything Corey ever says. <laughs> it's one of those things. And then Corey's sitting here sending me notes, as always. Victory visit is scheduled for the 4th of April. So it is Wednesday the 4th. If you do want to participate in the victory visit, please... Get a hold of Corey here at Moxie Media Promotions. It is one of those things we do need to RSVP for so we can um, talk with Buzz and make sure we have enough tour guides up there at the Shriners Hospital. Um, you know, drivers, we'd love to have you in your fire suits. Um, bring your helmets. Bring whatever you want. That way the kids can see it. Because I know, like, the football players, they go in in their uniforms. Let's get our fire suits on. Let's you Yeah, know. bring hero cards, whatever you have, autograph cards, whatever they want to call them. You know, them. I'll tell you what. Those kids up there get so much joy out of race car drivers or any professional athlete. And in their eyes, when we walk in, they're going to think we're we're Chase Elliott. Exactly. That's that's my point. It, you, you're looking at uh, they look at it from a different perspective. And, it's you know, something like that, that that's got to touch them, make them feel good. It's like having a rock star in the building. What? Oh, I'm right here. Oh, I'm right here. <laughs> You're See, no Jim. That, that's you, comedy. You're no Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> that's comedy right there. Oh gosh, you know I'm gonna take some comedy lessons from you eventually, Dom. I know. We'll get you. So, have you looked at the new IMCA modified rules for this year? Myself, no. You haven't. I looked at the Hornet rules. What'd you notice in the Hornet rules? Uh, nothing really. <laughs> nothing really. <laughs> nothing. There is a sheet of rules, Dom. You got to know those things inside and out so you can make your car fast. Oh, that's typical. No V Tech, no Z Tech, DOT street tires. Okay. No. We talk about no <laughs> V Tech and Z Tech, and I know that what that means, but talk about that for the race community. You're in the auto world. Yeah. Let, for well, the average race fan that doesn't understand what V Tech and Z Tech is, other than it being stamped on the back of a Honda. What is VTEC and CTEC? Sure. Well, your VTEC is basically a hydraulically operated, it changes your cam profile, and it's done through uh, oil pressure. So. What what does changing your cam profile do? Well, it's going to make it perform different. As you see in most Hondas, when they throttle them and you have VTEC, it goes from 3,000 RPM to 4,500 in no time, just zip, zip. So they don't want you to have that. They want you to have net normal Normally aspirated engines, no turbos, nothing like that. Same engine, same make, same model. So obviously you can't put a B-series engine into a Honda that had a D-series engine. Well, where's the fun in that? Well, that's why this is a Hornet class. It's not a $20,000 racing class. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come and on. Then, I... you've, then you've got the whole gray area of tires. You know, my what? tires are Hoosiers and DOT approved, but people tend to think they're illegal. 
whatever. They're DOT. You can drive them on the street. I don't see a problem. I don't win that much. I won one heat race. <laughs> <laughs> that much. I was waiting to see where you're going with that, buddy. I was like, Dom, I'm pretty sure you've won one heat race. Yeah. I don't, it was a top three car, though, at the end of the year. It was a good car. In a trophy dash. No. I've got, <laughs> I got the, hang on, let me go grab the paperwork. Oh, geez. Here we go. We're going to start po- throwing. It's posted up like a, like a, on the refrigerator here. On the fridge, <laughs> on the refrigerator. <laughs> Oh, uh, so nothing big changed in the Hornet rules on no, your side. No, no, nothing For, big there. Uh, modifies. What did you see in the modifies? There's a lot. IMCA implemented a lot of changes, and I'll tell you the biggest change. Biggest change of the rules that I've seen so far is with the wheel covers. Now, this has been a hot topic. I've been talking with uh, Jeff Hansen a lot about this, and some other people. Um, and now they're saying IMCA is requiring that wheel covers on all on the right side tires have to be physically affixed to the wheel using bolts. Well, that makes sense. How many of those things you see going off like a Frisbee because the Zeus fasteners get hit? If you have the right Zeus fasteners and the right springs, they won't come off. Oh, they fly like Frisbees. But here's the next thing. They're now wanting, on the front front right wheel, you cannot run a beadlock wheel. Right. But IMCA now is requiring that the... Zeus tabs, or the bolt tabs now, be welded to the wheel. Okay. So for all the guys, myself included, that went out and bought new wheels for this race season, mm-hmm. we've got to grind the nice shiny powder coat off and weld on them. Well, you sound like it, you make it sound like it's a bad thing, but you're going to put covers over them anyway. But now you can't take that wheel and move it to the, right, or to no. the left side of the car. You could, you're just going to have tabs on it. And it's going to look like heck. Yes. But by mid-season, all cars do. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. That's why you put a new body on it every two weeks. Oh, yeah. That's how I I got to stay in business. I got to sell myself some race car parts. I understand that part, but <laughs> we I'm can just usually kidding. make it through a season on, on one body. So. But that's – I understand why they're doing it. Don't get me wrong, because those wheel covers, you know, I've talked with – I was talking with Doug Davenport and – He's seen wheel covers up at Elma go straight through the plywood barrier. Oh, I could I could believe it. Those things get some momentum going. Mm-hmm. And when they were down at Duel in the Desert, Brett Root and uh, uh, Dave, Dave Bryn, I always forget Dave's last name, they were out cruising around in a gator, and the back of their gator, they had it filled with wheel covers. Wow. I mean, it's like, come on. If you're going to put it on your car, make sure it's going to stay. Now, that's the beauty of it. Some wheel manufacturers are making a ridge in there so the wheel cover would stay in. Yeah. Or the ring, excuse me, the ring would stay in without having to weld it. And not many manufacturers are making a non-beadlock wheel with tabs welded on. So, I mean, I'd well, love to see it if IMCA would just let us run a beadlock. Mm-hmm. It, they, could, they could solve this really two ways. The first one would be let us run a right front beadlock. Mm-hmm. Then, you, then you just change the rules say, Mud covers only on beadlock wheels. And I know the racers would love that. Sure, but I, I understand probably why they don't want that beadlock on the right front because then all those little bolts can grind away at a tire in the right rear or, some, or left rear of somebody's car. I'm just saying. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. But here, here's where I'm coming from, the right from beadlock. They're doing the, the wheel cover weld, mm-hmm. their wheel cover ring being welded on for safety. Mm-hmm. Safety of the fans. Safety of your fellow racers. What about the guy driving the car? Because we all know how these modifieds get hard over on that right front. Yeah. And especially when you've got a cushion mm-hmm. or you have a right front impact. If that right front goes down, oh, that's, that's where all your weight, y- you look at the weight transfer from the front or from the rear of the car to the front and then from the left of the car to the right. It's all transferring to that right front corner. The car is pivoted over. If that wheel just decides it wants, or that tire decides it wants to check out and pop the bead off of it, what's going to happen to that race car? You know, I said this when I just got into the Modifieds with Rod and Mac. I kept saying, why wouldn't you have one there? Why can't you have one? That just doesn't make any sense. Then I kind of started thinking about it. And that's the whole thing with the Zeus fasteners you were just talking about. You know, if you have the proper this, proper that. But how many times have you seen they rubbed against a wheel and they're getting knocked off? I mean, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. It doesn't make, I mean, 
I get it. You know, they're 